Um, as I mentioned before, we will have we're going to have um, Frank Kaskowicz from Clean Bombs Associates start us off, and then again, Mike Drew so graciously uh, offered to give us a 10 to 15 minute talk on source control after. So um, to get started, we'll start with Frank, um, and he has served as the president of the Clean Golf Associates Incorporated since 2007. Um, it is a nonprofit cooperative that provides oil spill response resources to 97 exploration and production companies operating in the Gulf of Mexico. Prior to his position, he served in the U.S. Coast Guard for 26 years, retiring at the rank of captain. He's a graduate of the Coast Guard Academy, and he also holds a master's degree in naval architecture and marine engineering and mechanical engineering from the University of Michigan, and is a licensed professional engineer. So without further ado, Frank. Thank you. Good morning, and thanks for having me. It's a real honor to be here today. I know a lot of you know a lot about clean golf, but uh, hopefully there's a few of you out there who don't know about clean golf. We have changed significantly over the last uh, seven years, and so uh, this will at least get you up to up to speed with, clean, uh, w with respect to what Clean Golf has done. Uh, for starters, we've been around a long time, since 1972, started with 33 operators. Uh, we are dedicated to the exploration and production industry in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we're a 501c6 nonprofit organization, so we essentially cater just down here uh, for the exploration and production industry, but we do get involved uh, in other incidents for other types of industries. And I would say that our, uh, uh, we have a, a wide variety of equipment. And, and what I like to say about Clean Gulf is we are kind of where the rubber meets the road. While planning and preparedness and practice is all good, ultimately the success of a response comes to have we performed well in what we do. So we take that very, very seriously. I can tell you your government agencies uh, also take it seriously and hold us very accountable uh, as they're routinely down uh, our way. So what I want to do is sort of paint a picture for you. Uh, this is actually a pretty good depiction of what a spill could look like, starting from offshore uh, and what you, what you need to be able to combat that oil spill. We term it as a layered response. We need, we need to be able to Fight the oil offshore at the source, in the near shore environment, and on the shoreline, uh, close to shore. So if Clean Gulf rolled everything in its inventory, we would have 55 vessels underway at, at one, at, all at the same time um, for the big one. So this kind of paints the picture of what you need offshore, near shore, uh, and everywhere else. So I want to talk first about the offshore capabilities. <coughs> So our signature vessel is what we call the Hoss Barge. Uh, this, this vessel's a beast, 172 by 52 foot wide. It's got a helicopter platform, living quarters for 16, 4,000 barrels of storage. You can see on the lower left there, those are brush skimmers that you lower into the water. Brush skimmers are very, very efficient at what they do. Um, this vessel has performed very well uh, over the years, not too often, because the majority of, of, uh, of incidents that occur very sporadically, um, but this is a very capable machine built in 1984 specifically for a well blowout. This is a good example of what it looks like in its fully rigged out condition. This was an accident that happened on the Mississippi River where a, a tank barge was T-boned by an outgoing vessel at the Crescent City Connection and uh, spilled oil for about a month. And so the Hoss barge was brought in. You can see that you have boom, fully extended. Takes three tugs to uh, hold it in place, one on the stern, two to hold the boom. That's approximately 660 foot of boom on either side. We can actually extend that out to 1,320 feet each side. But you get the idea. It's to catch oil, comes down the throat like a pitcher to a catcher, and uh, you, you, the brushes will clean up the oil and uh, put it into a, a sump where it's stored for whatever you're going to do afterwards. Um, this is the uh, Hoss Barge in action during the, uh, the MC-252 incident. Hoss Barge recovered roughly 40,000 barrels of oil, uh, which is a significant amount of oil uh, in the offshore environment. One of the other key features is it also is out fitted with a, a X-band infrared camera that, to post Macondo edition. That allows us to do 24-hour operation. Uh, we have other vessels as well, but 
on the horse barge, uh, it's, it's very important to have. So let's move on to another piece of equipment. In addition to the uh, horse barge, we have 22 rigid sweeping COSEC arms. These things are huge. They're about 50 foot wide, 8 foot high, 8 foot deep, uh, weigh 5 tons each. Um, it's a North Sea asset. They would be deployed on a vessel of opportunity, a very large vessel of opportunity. Essentially, it's, uh, it, it's, it's put out to the side by a crane and then lowered into the water. Now, the whole system's modular. Uh, that's the beauty of it, is these vessels have their own deck space and they need it in order to conduct their business. But in the event there's a big incident, it could be easily converted into an oil spill response vessel. So uh, we thought it would be a nice adaptation to bring to the Gulf of Mexico as it has, has proven capability in the North, North Sea. Basically what it was was an animation. I wanted to show uh, the key feature of, oh, it's going there we go. The, the key feature is that uh, it, it's, it's kind of like a Lego set. Everybody grew up with Legos. Well, you have a 20-foot container and a 40-foot container and then that crane inside of the container and then a cosec arm. And what you have to do is build that set, like an erector set, uh, on a vessel of opportunity. And it allows us to basically optimize a, a pre-engineered system onto a vessel. And these days, these vessels are huge. And so uh, it's very helpful to, uh, to be able to do that. We have a dozen of these modular systems that we can deploy on vessels. The other important thing is it's a... Uh, You come one more slide. Oh, there we go. So this is what it uh, looks like. This was during the MC-252. Uh, the, the oil can become uh, very heavy once all the lighter ends burn out. And so uh, it's important to get in the oil and then to have the ability to contain it and, and, to, and to pump it because it's very hard to pump highly viscous oil. So we have systems set up ready to do that uh, so that we can either put a weir skimmer in or a brush skimmer, two different type of skimming devices in the recovery world. A weir skimmer floats on the surface and tries to get to that oily water interface. Takes in a lot more water, but a lot of the oil as well. Brushes are incredibly efficient and you recover mostly oil. So I do want to make a, a quick point about uh, vessels of opportunity. A lot of people think of fishing vessels as vessels of opportunity. For us, that would not be the appropriate resource we're looking for. We want the petroleum industry dedicated vessels. These are the Coast Guard certificated ABS class vessels uh, with, with licensed captains on board, huge capability. Some of these vessels get up to 310 foot. Uh, those are the type of platforms we're looking for to put these rigid sweeping COSEC arms. So we keep track of these vessels. Because Clean Gulf has 95 member companies, virtually everybody in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, our board has approved that in crunch time when we need vessels, they'll all agree to work to share vessels uh, so that you can move one contract to a, another company so that that vessel can become an operating spill response resource. So how do we do that? We have a, 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 a contract with Port Vision, so we keep track of all the vessels in the Gulf at any given point in time. We know what their capability is. We can identify them. So when there's an unannounced exercise that are routinely put upon us, we can quickly identify these vessels for our member company to put our equipment on. In addition, we have a 180-foot uh, ocean-going boom barge. This is a post macondo uh, uh, idea that came to fruition. Essentially, rather than having your boom in a command uh, in, in a warehouse parked far, far away, that logistically takes an unbelievable amount of time to get there. Let's just have a boom barge with 25,000 feet of boom on board, and all you need to do is call a tug and, and get out to sea. So in the lower left there, you can see that uh, that's what it would look like. You have vessels that would have two 500-foot strands of boom, and we have a, a, basically a chain link gate that holds the two pieces of boom together. It serves as a funnel. We have 50 of these gates, so that the idea is with a big swath width. If you're in the oil, that oil will funnel back to you to the trailing skimmer, and you can recover oil much more efficiently and effectively. So that kind of takes care of the offshore. Let's talk about nearshore. So our new secret weapon that's kind of uh, maybe our most used resource as of late is our 95-foot fast response missile. 
These aluminum constructed Coast Guard certificated overnight accommodations for six. Rapid can go 20 plus knots. Has 249 barrels of storage. Has side mounted uh, skimmers, no more brush skimmers on them that ramp up and go down the side of the vessel. Uh, these are, are very pretty, pretty neat assets. They're very fast. Uh, we love them. Now that whenever there's a, a, a potential incident, if we get right now or in the later in the day, rather than wait for a first light flight tomorrow to check it out, we can roll these vessels underway because it can be unseen rapidly and they can assess the situation and provide awareness on what the spill, uh, what the status of the spill is. So we have four of these in the inventory, pre-positioned throughout. Um, one of the key things they have is, uh, is, is the X-band infrared uh, camera. These are pretty neat systems because um, they're gyro-stabilized, geo-referenced. You can essentially keep track of the oil at night. Uh, the X-band radar picks up oil on the surface of the water. Oil has a damp different dampening uh, effect than regular uh, capillary action of of, of waves, so it picks it up as a signature, sends it uh, through software to the infrared camera, and then the infrared camera can figure out the relative thickness of that oil. Allows us to stay in the, uh, in the oil 24-7. Uh, so this is a post Macondo um, improvement. So this is what it looks like in the infrared. Uh, we have the, uh, the, the display, the, the, the in, uh, electronic chart display that we know where we're at. And, and what it looks like. So a lot of companies, a lot of, and the regulators, both want to know what's going on. We can provide pictures, video back to the command post to let them know uh, what's going on. Pretty neat stuff. Also with those vessels that we just got through installing these gyro stabilizers. These are pretty neat uh, pieces of equipment. Gyro this gyro stabilizer weighs about two tons. It's in a sphere in almost a perfect vacuum. We installed it on the stern of the 95 foot vessel. And what it does is it, is it precesses. So the theory of uh, principle of angular momentum, I know you're all up on your physics. Uh, what happens is as a vessel rolls, it provides instant counter torque so that the vessel doesn't roll. So basically it has reduced our roll, uh, roll period by 65%, which is pretty remarkable for an aluminum vessel that's small, that goes offshore and is subject to wind and waves. Um, so it provides a lot more stability. The captains like it because they don't get seasick. And um, it actually becomes a more stable skimming platform. So pretty neat pe uh, piece of equipment that we have. In addition, we have nine portable skimming units. One of the things you see about Clean Guff is we're, 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 we have a mix of the type of resources. Some are dedicated, ready to get underway. Some we need the vessels of opportunity. We need nine uh, vessels in order to run our uh, fast response uh, units to get on scene. These are portable skimming devices that you can use a weird type skimmer. So let's talk a little bit inshore now. So we've got the offshore covered, we've got the nearshore covered. So inshore, because oil moves where oil is going to move. Eventually it's going to come ashore in a marsh, on a beach, in a, in a canal, in the waterway. So you need to be ready in conditions where uh, you don't have the proper draft. You need shallow water vessels. So this is our uh, 56 foot shallow water vessels, they're fast, three 350 horsepower outboards on the back. Um, that's what it looks like. It's got a front end uh, conveyor belt type system that's used. And, and basically, um, you can see that when you get oil in a, in a, in a marshy, inaccessible type environment, the uh, 56 foot only draws a couple of feet of water. So that's good in order to get in there and to have that kind of storage. What's unique about them is it's got you know, cover. Uh, it's got a living core, uh, not living, it's got a, a, a cabin, an air conditioning, all of that's very, very important. So, that's, and then on top of the 56, we got even something more modern, which is a 60 foot shallow water skimmer. This provides a little more of a capability in that we can come out of, of the, the passes uh, in the Louisiana area or even Texas area get out of the open water and come around and, and attack spills should they occur in the shallows that are very inaccessible, but you'd have to get a boat around to it. A couple foot of draft, uh, you can see they've got brush skimmers, these things got a bimini top, they've got uh, it's a cabin, it's air conditioner, you've got a bathroom. It's very important for, uh, 
for people who are responding on some of the smaller assets, you don't always have that. So everybody has to come into the back to the dock quickly. High storage, high speed, 249 barrels, very, very uh, important asset for us. So that kind of covers the majority of the type of mechanical recovery equipment. We also have the dispersants and the burning, which I know is going to be covered this afternoon. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to hit on that. But I did want to make a point that we do have one of the best wildlife rehabilitation capabilities in the Gulf of Mexico, mobile capabilities. The idea is that wherever there's a spill, we can mobilize our trailers. Uh, my, my partner over here, Frankie Palmazano, he's done a masterful job over the years of putting together a capability that we can bring on scene for the wildlife experts, such as IBRCC, Tri-State, WRA, uh, for them to come in and to do what they need to do best, which is clean the birds. And, and that's what we do. We set it up for everybody so that they can uh, clean, clean the animals. So, um, one of the things we're pre-positioned, which is important to know, throughout the Gulf of Mexico at eight different sites. And um, this allows us to get a rapid response out. Our goal is to get a resource on scene within six hours. Very hard goal to meet. Uh, maybe other than the hinterlands of Texas, we can pretty much do that if, uh, if given good notification. And that's a self-imposed goal. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, it's kind of a quick and dirty overview of Klingo. If anybody has questions, please uh, please stop by and let me know. Thank you.